All right, welcome to our first attempt at notes here for chemistry class. Uh, pretty much, let me give you a rundown how this is going to work. Uh, so you can see uh, our notes on here. Uh, we're going to be making measurements. The unit is chapter three. It's actually the first unit we're going to do. Uh, and then there's some notes down here. Okay, the first one says any phrase with a red underline goes in the left column. Those are like main ideas. Those are questions we're trying to get answered. That's the whole purpose for taking notes. Uh, the rest of it, that information, will then go on the right side of your notes if you're taking Cornell notes. Uh, if you're not, then use the red underlines as like headings, and then the rest of the stuff would be the notes that go underneath it. Okay? If there's something written in green, it's just like a point I'm trying to make. It's not necessarily something that you uh, need to know. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye uh, to my picture here. I'm sure you don't want to stare at my ugly mug the whole time we're taking these notes. Okay? So, let's talk about making measurements. So, What's the difference between a certain and an uncertain number? Okay, well, let's look at this ruler down here. We've got our ruler in centimeters. We've got 10 centimeters marked in here, and we have three different lengths of string. Okay, well, how would I measure letter A here? Well, how, what length would I say that this is? Well, most people would say, ah, oh, it's about three centimeters, maybe three and a half centimeters. Okay, but in chemistry, we have to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more reliable than that. So what you do, okay, uh, that measurement would actually be called 3.4 centimeters okay now I'm taking a guess at that point four because I'm saying well it's not quite halfway okay this would be about halfway right here it's just to the left of that so I'm gonna say it's about 3.4 okay now let's talk about these two numbers okay the three okay is definitely a certain number why would I say the three is a certain number well I'm certain that this length of string is longer than three centimeters, okay? Because it goes past that line. There is a line that denotes three centimeters, okay? But the four that I said, the 3.4, the four is definitely not a certain number. In fact, it's an uncertain number because I guessed it, okay? Every measurement has to have one uncertain number. No more, no less, okay? So you can't just simply say that something is three centimeters. You have to say that it's 3.4. And it's all based on whatever measuring device you're using. Okay, so for this one, excuse me, the tenths place, uh, the first decimal place is the uncertain number because I know the ones place for all these numbers. I know where six centimeters is and where seven centimeters is. So I'm going to guess that this one is probably somewhere right around, I don't know, 6.7 because I know it's more than half. It's not quite 6.6. .6. It, it's just a guess. Just because I say it's 6.7, someone else might say that's 6.8 and that's completely fine. Okay, that's a little bit of uncertainty. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, this last piece of string, since it goes all the way to the 10, okay, and stops right on the line, well, I know it's a 10, but I told you that every measurement has to have one uncertain number. And so the 10 is certain. I still have to add the 0 .0 as my uncertain number. Okay, let me show you a couple more examples. Oh, there's my little information about 0. Okay, so now this ruler... Okay, not only has the ones place, but now it also has the tens place, the first decimal place marked. So now my uncertain number will be the next place after that, or the hundredths place. So if I look at my first measurement, okay, it's letter A here, and it's in between 0.5 and 0.6, right about halfway. So what would I call that? I would call that 0.55 centimeters. The first five being certain, the second five is uncertain. Okay, let's look at B. I would say that B is about 1.37. I know it's 1. I know it's 0.3, because here's my 3 right here, 0.1.2.3. And it's almost all the way to the fourth one, so I'm going to ballpark that one and say it's 0 0.07. So 1.37 centimeters. C, again, is right on the line of 2.5, so I have to add my 0. Okay, 2.50. If I go to the right side here, D is between... 1 and 2 after the 12, so it's 12.1 and it's in between 0.2, but it's not quite halfway, so I'm going to say that's 12.13. Okay. E is right on the 7, so 13.1234567, it's right on that line, so it's 0 0.70. That 0 is my uncertain. And then F is right on the 15, but again, I have to go all the way to that hundredths place, 15.00. If I just put 15 centimeters here for the F, that would be incorrect. If I put 15.0, that would be incorrect because I know where all the point zero places are, including this one. Just because it's longer doesn't mean it's not a point zero place. I have to add the hundredths place because that's the uncertain part in between the tenths. Okay, now let's talk about a meniscus and why those are so important. Okay, 
In order to talk about meniscuses, you need to know what a graduated cylinder is. A graduated cylinder is a way to measure uh, amounts of liquid or volumes of liquid, but it's used it's used the same markings as a ruler. And they're just turned upside straight up and down. Okay, think of a ruler if you had it on paper going side to side. This is like a ruler, but it sticks right up into the air. Okay, but the markings work the exact same way. So here's 50 milliliters. This would be 50, or excuse me, 49, 48, 47, and so on and so forth. Okay. The meniscus, okay, is this part right here, okay, where the where it forms almost like a little bubble down below here, okay, because what happens is, especially water, is adhesive. It likes to stick to the sides of things, and the smaller the graduated cylinder, the further down your meniscus will go. Longer one, or bigger uh, graduated cylinders, the meniscus won't be as, uh, won't bow as much. So what we do is we call this a meniscus, right here. And we're going to measure from the bottom of it. So even though the top of this is just underneath the 44 line here, okay, the meniscus line actually drops all the way down to the 43. So I would say that that's 43.0 uh, milliliters. Okay. Sometimes, depending on your liquid, it might look like a double line. You always measure from the bottle then, bottom then. excuse me. And it's really important when you're looking at meniscus that you try to get as level to the meniscus as possible. Don't look down. Okay, if I'm standing above, okay, hang on, let me get my little picture back up here. Okay, hang on, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't get my picture up here, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you could see what I was doing, if I was standing above a graduated cylinder while my graduated cylinder was on the table, okay, well then obviously I'm looking down through the meniscus, my measurement is going to be as accurate because it's changing based on what level I watch it at. So I want to try to get eye level with the meniscus in order to get the most accurate reading. And then again, I'm going to go in between these two spots. So if this is 50 and this is 60, there's 10 spots in between. So that means these are the ones. So this is 59, 58, 57. This is 55, 54, 53. This is 52. So right in between here would be my guess. So this is 52.8 milliliters of fluid. Okay. And then the last point we need to talk about is accuracy and precision. I'm going to tell you a little story about how I was a... Olympic archer. Uh, I almost had a chance to be an Olympic archer. I was very precise, but I wasn't accurate, and that's why I missed the team. Okay, and let's talk about why that is. Well, accuracy means closeness to the actual value. Okay, precision is how close the measurements are together. Okay, so again, think of me as an archer. I'm really precise, but I'm not accurate. What does that mean? Okay, well, let's take a look. Okay, if I look at my first set of arrows here, if I shoot at this target, boom. Okay, four bullseye shots. Awesome. Okay, those are accurate because they're right around the bullseye. They're right where I want to be. And they're precise because they're all clumped together. Okay, second round I shoot. They're still all clumped together, but now are they on the bullseye? No, they're not. So they're not accurate because I'm aiming for the bullseye. So I didn't hit my accurate spot, but they were all close together. So I would call that precise. Okay, my third round, okay, look how far apart I am. But the, pro the thing is, okay, the average of the top and bottom is the middle. The average of the sides is also the middle. So this is an accurate shooter because he put them in some pretty uh, hard to spot places. But would you say that he's precise? No, I wouldn't because they're not all clumped together. They're spread far apart. And then this last one, they're all over the place. So I would say that they are not accurate and also not precise. Okay, real quick, uh, I'm trying to finish this in less than 10 minutes. Uh, let's look at it with numbers. If my true value was 325, okay, and I got, oh, sorry, this line's supposed to be down below here. And these are my four numbers that I got. Well, those are all pretty close to 325. So I would say that those are pretty precise because they're right around my target. And I'd also say they're pretty accurate because if I take the average of these, add them together, divided by four, I get 325. The average of all four of them matches my true value. So then they're accurate and they're precise. But if I did this second, uh, excuse me, this experiment a second time, and I got these numbers, look how far apart these numbers are. Oh my gosh, there's no way those are accurate. But if I add them together and then divide by four, my total still equals the true value. So since the average equals the true value, those are actually accurate numbers. But the problem is they're not precise because of how far apart they are. These ones are precise because they're all clumped together. These ones are not precise because of how far apart they are. Now, the difference in precision and how far away you can be really depends on the size of your numbers uh, and what you're actually measuring.
So in conclusion, what's the difference between a certain and uncertain number? Certain numbers are listed. They're on your measuring device. Uncertain number, that's your one guess. Every number has to have one uncertain number. A meniscus is that curve at the bottom of a graduated cylinder, uh, excuse me, at the top of the liquid, and then you measure from the bottom, and then accuracy is how close to the desired outcome you are. Precision is how close together the different measurements are. Okay? Hopefully you got everything. If you missed something, please, please, please watch this again or email me at jkabuski at gocathedral.com. Uh, I would be happy to work with you, and I look forward to, uh, to spending more time with you this semester.